Get it out of your system <laughs> and then get inside and shop. Oh, just a bit of cold play for this yeah. one. <laughs> You two are in cahoots. Get out of here, both of you. Hello and welcome to Patchwork. My name is Dion and I'm with Christian. Welcome to Patchwork. And Josh. Welcome to Patchwork. Josh, you have been performing a comedy festival show with your brother, and I believe you have some special news for us. Yes, um, we just got nominated for the Golden Gibbo. Oh, no idea what it is. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so it's one of the two major awards of the festival, um, along with the Barry, which is for the best show. The Golden Gibbo, six shows were nominated, and it's for local independent productions that have a really strong artistic vision and have sort of strived to achieve something unique and something different um, and very clearly states, <laughs> without any concern for commercial success. <laughs> Before you start, Dion, and get into the nitty gritties, you arrived at my place earlier tonight mm -hmm. and you parked in front of my mum's garage. Mm -hmm. And this is my family home, so I said, I'll move your car for you. I got into your car and I have never in my <laughs> life seen a car as disgusting <laughs> as yours. It's just not that bad. In my life. Not only has it not been... So, there's, there's multiple issues at hand here. I would be okay with the fact that you have items in the car and lots of them. But yours just hasn't been vacuumed either <laughs> for for years. But who cares? That's that's the question. Also, you, sorry, I'll you, tell you who cares. Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also, to tell the whole story, I walked in with food. I'd been I'd been volunteering all day. <laughs> I walked in with food, and the reason why you said that you that the car needed to be moved was because your mum was out and she's gonna she was gonna come back home. So you took the keys off me, and I didn't say Christian, can you move the car? Nothing to do with why your no, no, car no, no, is no, dirty. No, 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 no. It's Get got, to the point. No, no, it's got something to do with you taking my keys and me thinking that you're doing it in good faith. It so was... you should so you should have taken the keys, moved the car, and not and not comment on it, Christian. <laughs> Entirely altruistic. Originally, <laughs> but once I got in there, I cannot understand how you drive every day in that filth. There were multiple water bottles, two hats, one, both of them. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Please, Josh, please try and be impartial about this. Two water bottles, two hats. Know. What else are there? The multiple car seats in there as well. <laughs> both hats look like they should belong to a 90 year old man. They do. <laughs> But what else had, was there? What else did you say? Open packages. Oh, packages of what? For, for an Apple product. <laughs> Some weird Apple product you bought. You'd left the I'm packages open. I'm so straight. far on Christian's side right what? now. Yeah, <laughs> it's, because, it's because you're exactly the same. You like, I keep a tidy car. I know, but... You if, have an energy bag. I don't even know what an energy <laughs> bag is, but sorry. you had it in the back if seat. There was, if there was mould on the roof, if there, were, if there was food in there, it just sounds like a pretty, like a kind of, you know, a kind of a messy car. To be honest... If I could open the back door, <laughs> it'd be great. I could see if there was mould, but I couldn't. I know. The, the back door doesn't the, work. The locks are stuffed. Well, I'll have to contact the real estate agent and get them to fix up these issues because it's not my it's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the mould on the ceiling. I was at work the other day and I was using the bathroom facilities. Um, and so I went in and there, went into the cubicle and shortly after someone else entered the cubicle next to me. Um, so we're there already. He's lost 30, already D on God. <laughs> and so I was using the toilet. Um, mate, we haven't even got to the great stuff yet. Yeah, it's just toilet. Yeah. Um, so I'm sitting there with someone next to me. Noises occurred on, from, on my behalf. Um, and then I get up to go flush the toilet and go out and wash my hands. Another colleague comes in. And etiquette would suggest mm -hmm. you say nothing or at least it's a mm, <laughs> or a nod or something. But what he did was he goes, G'day, mate, how are you going? And I'm there and I know that this other person has heard noises coming from oh, me. No. So, what I did, oh. I disguised my voice and oh. went, oh, yeah, pretty good. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I didn't want the person in the cubicle to know who it was. How did he react? He yeah. was like... Okay. And that was it. And then I finished up and left. That's really funny. But it, I don't know why. It's like, it should always be, if you're ever, if there's ever a changing of the guard in the toilets, yeah. 
if there's someone else in the cubicle, you give away no clues at all to who the person <laughs> is. That is key. You do not use names. You might nod, but that's it. Yeah. I completely agree. It's unspoken etiquette. No one wants to exchange conversation yep. in the bathroom. But yep. also, I think at a workplace, no one wants a urinal. Yeah. Who wants to stand mm. next to a colleague and pee? Do you know, I was actually thinking about this the other day. Do you know why there are urinals? I, I reckon it's because they're cheap, cheaper. They're cheaper. Yeah. They're cheaper than normal toilets. The it's dumb, the only reason why they put them in. The dumb thing with, with the one at our work is it's like one and a half person. So it's like... It's, Isn't that awkward? That I know, because it's like either have it as two, which you're probably not going to get two, what, or just have it as a single. What do you mean one and a half person? Well, like it's one of the wall ones. And it like would fit one and oh, a half people. I thought it was one and then a, a child's <laughs> one next to it for like bring your kid to work day. <laughs> but I feel like the, I feel like the same designers of those urinals are also the people that design like all of those things that are sort of in between. So like economy class seats on aeroplanes <laughs> as well. Like it's just it's just the same production factory where you kind of like oh yeah someone could fit in there but they also might not fit in. It's there It's just as gonna well. be an uncomfortable squeeze. Whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. But it's such an. It's That's a, their motto. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I think I've spent the least time in a workplace than all three of us, but I did very recently complete a stint at your workplace, Josh. Mm, Yes. And when I was there, I thought how great it would have been if inside the cubicles, there was a button so that every single time you went to do something, you could, it would like play a trumpet noise or something to kind of mask the sound of what you were doing. They have that in like Korea and Japan. Really? They literally have a button that disguises, that makes disguising noises. Really? Yeah, Yeah, for sure. You've been to Japan, haven't you? I have I I never, I never, are you kidding me? I never went to the toilet in Japan. (laughs) (laughs) It was 12 days. (laughs) So, the toilets in Japan are unbelievable. Oh, yeah. I'm aware of how incredible they are. I didn't know... That. No, they play gentle music. No. So what do you want? Why do you want no, a trumpet? I want, I want something that's really going to masquerade. So, you hold that button you down. You want like an overture and, or and, something. And, and yeah. And the longer you hold the button down, the more instruments that kick in. <laughs> you, want, you want some hand zimmer to come in. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I love it if it detected how heavy your flow was as well. <laughs> so, adjusted the kind of overture for that. Oh, just a bit of cold play for yeah. this one. <laughs> I think it's really important with workplace toilets that they maintain a proximity from where you work. Mm -hmm. So maintain a proximity from where you work and maintain a proximity from the kitchen. (laughs) Because no one... I've been in so many situations where the kitchen and the toilet have been close together and the bleeding of smells is... Is oh. insufferable. Do you know what this reminds me of? Recently, I've been looking for places to live and I've been inspecting all these different properties. And what you find in the 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 way that properties are laid out, like the floor plan, some developers are having a laugh with mm. the kind of... Like, it's unbelievable. I went to this one place. You walk in, bedroom on the right-hand side. Actually, I'll tell you two stories. The first story, you walk in on the right-hand side and then there's a second bedroom and there's no built-in robes in either bedroom. They're all in the hallway on the left-hand <laughs> side. What? And the second bedroom had a glass sliding door <laughs> that led onto the kitchen. The second story was that That's I went. Not a bedroom. The second so story strange. was that I went to another inspection, and it was populated by the tenants. So the tenants were still there. The first room on the right was the biggest mess. It was worse than my car. <laughs> it was the biggest mess you've ever seen. And then you walk into the living room. Walk past the second bedroom is fine. Walk into the living room. And one of the tenants was just there sitting down reading a book. And there were like 30 people going through and she was just sitting there reading a book. It was the weirdest thing. You could tell it was some. they were getting kicked out or something. I love it if one third of the couch was incredibly messy and the rest <laughs> was really clean. <laughs> <laughs> I find it really interesting, uh, this idea that people in offices are starting to replace seats with treadmills. Have you heard this? What? Yeah, it's this kind of like uh, promoting action and uh, trying to stop the culture of sitting down, the sitting culture. So like standing desks Yeah, yeah, so standing desks. This is a step above that. But some, yeah, this is another level. So some workplaces are bringing in like these mini treadmills that you can walk on as you're working. And no, I, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't. Yeah, but I had this idea that what happens if the people, the contractors that came in, replaced all the seats, including <laughs> the toilet seat. <laughs> so you went to the toilet and it's just a treadmill. <laughs> just got to keep active. Yeah. <laughs> Better use the urinal, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, everybody, thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, so this is our weekly assembly. So uh, the grade sixes uh, on the left, thank you. Grade fives, fours, and yep, thank you, Miss Lansfield. Okay, so uh, thank you for joining us, and I'll just get straight to it. We've got our physical education teacher, Mr. Johnson, who would uh, like to address you first. Mr. Johnson? Thank you very much. Um, congratulations, firstly, to the Year 5 boys football team who won the Interschool Sports Day last week. Um, they were fabulous in their performance, and we, um, we really would like to honour those students. Uh, they played very well and deserve a huge amount of congratulations. Um, just on a side note, as most of you will know, the new courtyard has just been completed and we're very much looking forward to students playing in the new space, but there are no balls to be used in the courtyard. Um, but yeah, that's all I wanted to say on that. Um, I'll hand over back to the headmaster. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. Uh, so another congratulations to the grade sixes. Uh, next, we've got Miss Lansfeld, who is our music and performing arts teacher. Miss Lansfeld. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to mention we've had a spate of stolen instruments lately. Um, I know some of the grade fours have had their recorders stolen. Um, we have only had a couple of them return. They seem to have a strange smell to them. Um, so if you could just make sure that everyone's keeping an eye on their instruments. Um, also, I'd just like to mention um, about the courtyard. Um, there is to be no uh, people on the courtyard at all. Um, it's just we've just had some issues with some of the surface. Um, it's starting to come up and there's some, some roots. Um, so there's a bit, a bit dangerous to trip on. So if we could just avoid use of the courtyard, that'd be great. Thank you. I'll back, back to the principal. Thank you very much, Miss Lansfeld. Uh, next, we've got Mr. Polak, who is our librarian. He needs, he's been noticing some issues with book returns. So I'd really like everyone to pay attention. Uh, Mr. Polak. Um, thank you very much, Headmaster. Um, I just wanted to address some issues we've had. Uh, we've had some overdue books and we're actually going to be upping the fee for uh, lateness of books uh, from five cents to ten cents a day. Um, it's very important that um, the books are returned to the trolley on the left. Um, on a side note, um, we're pleased to have a courtyard, but we're quite concerned that students are taking it for granted. So if you could pick up your rubbish... And also make sure you don't kick the edging of the courtyard, like I've observed during lunchtime on the last three days. That would be very much appreciated. The courtyard is very important to this school. So thank you. Thank you, Headmaster. Thank you, Mr. Polak. That's very important that everyone listens to what he says about the book returns. Next, we have Mrs. Gabriel. She's our junior school director. She's going to be talking about the prep class's performance of Robin Hood this Thursday afternoon. That'll be on the courtyard. <laughs> I did something a little bit strange the other day and it got me thinking about how we interact with strangers and how we just kind of don't. Yeah. Like we really avoid them at all costs. So I was, I just parked my car and I was walking towards a shopping centre and I kind of saw this guy who had kind of pulled his bike over and he was sucking on his camelback. You know, the big, wa the big backpacks with water in them. And he was really, he was sweating a lot and he was sucking it down like one of those farm animals, like a, a human feeding a farm animal a yes. bottle. Yes. Just like, <laughs> and his eyes were bulging out. Like, and I got, like at a kid's farm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I got really close to him and I was really excited. I was like, yummy. <laughs> <laughs> I said it to him. And he kind of like spat, spat up the water and started choking a little bit. I was like, oh, sorry. Sorry, mate. Sorry. Were you on your own? And just Yeah. But it right. was just this instinctive thing. Like he was sucking on it so hard. I just needed to say, it just came out. And, and I walked by him and I was like, this guy is, was not expecting anyone nah. at all to interact with That's him. That's great. And I blew past him and I just walked inside the shopping center. Because I find that my interactions with strangers very often come down to there's some element of common ground. So there's something that either we yep. both notice something yep. or, you know, you'll see someone dodgy and just look across and you like raise the eyebrows and go, hmm, that thing. Yeah. But my yeah, favorite, yeah. That's my favorite interaction, yeah. that thing. Yeah. When you, Whatever when it you, is. Such a yeah, nice you make that connection. That's what I had was because uh, I used to drive a black Barina 
and uh, we were stopped at lights and there was someone opposite, like to the right, going the opposite way, right next to me, also driving a black Beretta. Love it. And so I was like looking at the black... Hey, this, uh, it's the, we're doing it. We've got yeah. the black marinas, right? <laughs> Both made really good choices. Yeah, and then she looked at me very confused at first. And then she, it, you could see it twig in her brain. She went, I've got a black marina as well. And she was like, yeah, black marinas. <laughs> I thought she was going to look at you and sort of mime and go, not my car. Yeah. Not, this is someone else's, not my car. We don't have this connection. It's such a strange community, the black marina community. I wonder where this, I wonder where this she's gone on to another black marina and be like, guys, we really need to band together here. <laughs> but it's weird. You do have an association. Like I got a Subaru and I love, I love fellow Subaru drivers. They're always the best drivers. And especially oh, when, really? you, when you see someone who has the same model, same color, you're like, there must be what? something similar about us. That is the <laughs> dumbest thing you've ever said. What, yes, co- what color is the car, Dion? <laughs> what color is your car? Silver. Very common. <laughs> very, very common. Are they all spectacularly messy inside? <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. It's the only way you get it serviced. On the subject of my messy car, I forgot to tell this story. So, I got it into my head um, one day that I wanted to buy a watermelon and roll it down a hill. Um, and so, I-, I got it into my head. <laughs> no, 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 Josh, he did. I was part of that message thread and he got it real yeah. stuck so, in there. So, so, I got it. So, I got, so, I went down to the, the food market and I went to look for watermelons and I was surprised they were so cheap. They were like $2.50 a kilo. And I thought, Whoa. wow. And I thought, wow, that's really, really cheap. And so, I picked one up and I was like, oh, this is heavy. This is going to be a couple of kilos. Ended up being 10 kilos. Whoa. And then, so she, the lady put it on the scales and I was like, uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just get it. <laughs> so I, so I, so I had this 10 kilo watermelon in my hand. I put it in the back seat of my car. Obviously, as Christian was saying earlier, the back seat, the, the, the back doors don't work. So I had to unlock them. I wedged it in between the, the, the driver's seat and the back seat and I left it there. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. anyway, the yeah. next the next day I went to a car mechanic. <laughs> the next day I went to a car mechanic, and fifty meters away from the mechanic, I realized that I'd had this watermelon in there. I was like, Jesus, I can't let them see that this watermelon is here. <laughs> so what I did is I was like, I stopped the car, got out of the car, grabbed the watermelon, put it in the boot of my car, put it in the boot, put yeah. it in the boot, put it in the boot of my car, got the car fixed. Cost me like four hundred bucks to get my car fixed. And anyway, time went by. I then, a couple of weeks later, um, I opened up the... Well, I kind of noticed a weird, stale smell in the back of my car. So, I opened up the boot of the car and lo and behold, the watermelon was still there. What a surprise. But I'd forgotten that there was a packet of liquid minestrone <laughs> soup that I'd previously <laughs> intended to use for camping that the, that the watermelon had repeatedly run over and there was minestrone soup all over my car. There's minestrone soup all over my car. And, and thank God I'm unemployed because that day I then had to get my car professionally cleaned. And and it sounds like after today, it needs to happen again. I, I was there when you first opened the boot yeah. to discover the minestrone. And Dion's reaction was more so concerned for the minestrone. He cleaned it up but left the watermelon there still. Yeah. The watermelon had become a fixture of the boot. It's such good minestrone soup. It's got all these like great natural ingredients. Anyway, so I had to get it professionally cleaned. What are you doing with the watermelon? Oh, so yeah. so yes, yeah, so get happened, rid of it. What so, happened to the watermelon? So we all I, want to know. So, <laughs> so I, tr- for months, I tried to arrange accomplices who would help me roll this, who would help me roll this watermelon down the hill. So I sort of I tried to source different locations, like the top of my street. Sorry, you don't need accomplices to roll. It's not a fucking like giant Indiana Jones no, 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 size no, no. thing. It's a watermelon. Be, this yeah. is going to be filmed. So I, so I got some friends involved, created a thread on WhatsApp, and they were like, "Yeah, you should roll it. We should, <laughs> we should fucking, we could, we should explode it. We should smash it with an axe." Sorry, Dion. No, we weren't. You were like that, and everyone was like, "I'm not sure I've got time to roll this watermelon it, down a hill." It came to the point where. I told I told a few people about this. One guy in particular, a guy I know who who's who's blind, he cannot see anything. He wanted us or he us, he wanted me <laughs> to attach bells to the watermelon <laughs> so that he could be there to roll it down the hill. Anyway, the the watermelon, the best thing about this was the watermelon 
it went from my car, then it went into my house. And because I was living with my folks at the time, my mum kept on asking me questions like, Dion, what are you doing with this watermelon? I was like, rightly so. <laughs> and I was like, oh, don't, don't worry about it. I, I, I'll, I'll use it. And it oh, kept on going from place to place in the house. So it started in the kitchen, then it went to the lounge room, then it went to what? the living room and went to all these different places. Anyway, it got to the point where the watermelon started to look very aged. It kind of looked like your grandparents look when they're like 89 years old. They, they've sort of got that. They've, they've got those sort of sunspots that have been developed over time. So what I did was I returned to the same market. I had the watermelon in my car. I took the watermelon out of my car because I couldn't arrange anyone to roll it down a hill. And I Do placed, yourself, you idiot. And I placed it after hours in front of the market. And like sort of it's just like returning the baby back <laughs> to the fire station. <laughs> I returned it to its place of origin, and I thought it'd be really funny if the first person who gets to the market opened the gates and go, "Oh, there's another one. There's another one. And someone, someone returned." <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't find someone to roll it down the hill. Yeah. I have yeah, a psychotic yeah, exactly. watermelon story as well. Oh, God. So, at the, uh, it was a really strange, really strange thing to find. But I drove into my, this current house, so my old family home. I was driving in one day when I was about 19. And I looked at our box hedges, our English box hedges. And I was like, what the fuck? And it was like it was masquerading as a box hedge. A watermelon <laughs> just sitting in between the box hedges. And I was like, how could that be possible? It must have fallen out of my mum's boot. I'll go get it. So I went and picked it up and it was growing out of the ground. What? That, that so is it, incredible. So a watermelon somehow grew out of the ground unbeknownst to our entire family and masqueraded like- as an English box hedge for <laughs> ages. Well, to get full size. Yeah, full size. And I was like, this is insane. So I, I, I didn't trust eating it because I was like, how could a watermelon grow here? Something is wrong with this watermelon. So I disconnected it and I started kicking disconnected it. Disconnected it. <laughs> I turned off the power. <laughs> I um, I cut it. I cut it at its uh, at its stem and I started kicking it like a soccer ball with my co- <laughs> with my cousin up and down the street. And then I was like, well. Now that we've kicked it a little bit, surely... <laughs> I, guess, I, I guess we better return it back to the market. Yeah. <laughs> now that we've kicked it a bit, surely we'll just it'll decompose. We'll just leave it in the box edge. <laughs> so we returned it back to the box edge. The day after, I drive back home. I go inside, have dinner. After dinner, mum's serving a platter <laughs> of fruit. And I love if your grandparents are there and they're all frozen and they're <laughs> yeah. all stuck in the water. Yeah, well, my grandparents were there. <laughs> so what my nonno had done... He had found the watermelon, brought it inside, <laughs> said to my mum that he had bought it from a supermarket. She cut it up and served it to the entire family. <laughs> Crazy. And I said, this watermelon doesn't taste right. And I said, no, no, where did you get this from? And he said, your front yard. <laughs> I have a watermelon story as well. <laughs> this is amazing. So when I was at UD camp, I used to run the orientation camps. And so we had a, a watermelon there and it got to the end of the camp and we just wanted to use it up. We hadn't had it. So me and my mate started this game where we're standing facing each other. It was for eating, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it okay. was, yeah. Um, and it had been growing next to the box hedges. And yeah. um, <laughs> so we were standing facing each other and we started and we just held it and we were just tossing it to one another. And it's quite heavy to catch, like, ooh, catching it. Mm-hmm. And then we could take one step back. And you go again, you go, ooh, and you get it. And then we had like the whole campsite, everyone sort of caught on what was going on. They got really <laughs> excited by it. So we're about, you know, two, three meters away. And these heavy heaves like, ooh, and, like, ooh, and everyone goes, ooh. <laughs> and we just kept running. And it got to about, I don't know, like 10 meters or so. And then finally it just slipped through one of our hands. Oh and everyone's like, God. hey. Did it explode? Because I think that was the point of my whole thing. I wanted to see what I happens when it hits something. Your your imagination of what a watermelon is capable yeah. of is wild. But they've got pyrotechnics <laughs> inside of <laughs> them. I feel like you're expecting it to have like a little mushroom cloud <laughs> or something. Or like seven more yeah. watermelons just yeah, spring it. out. <laughs> I have had this thought for a while and it came to me the other day I was having lunch with a friend and I looked over to the table next to us and there was a half eaten salad it, it like it was it was like half three quarters hadn't been hadn't been eaten and I thought why why does society say that this is going to be that the preference is for this to get thrown out why can't I either go to the waitress and go hey is anyone eating that I would love to eat that 
Or why can't I just go over and grab it myself and start eating yeah. it? Do you, would you guys, I would have no problem doing that. Would you guys have a problem with doing that? Massive advocate for eating off other people's plates. Strangers, whatever. If the food's there, yeah. what, the thing that pisses me off the most is when you suggest that idea to someone mm-hmm. and they say, oh, it's it's unhygienic yeah. to do that. Yeah, it's it's not unhygienic. That's the food that you would have been served. Well, because well, my metric on that is not that I ever do it, but it makes no reason that you shouldn't. But it's like... If I'm eating something, I don't finish it. I don't immediately just go and spit on everything that's left. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But what about, okay, what about changing? That's exactly what people like, are expecting. Yeah, they go, oh, we just spat all over that food. It's always about the saliva. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, or hands. Oh. So, so that changes it for you? What oh. about a hamburger, a half-eaten hamburger that's been... Uh... Ooh, well, if you had a direct... Yeah, because there's also yeah. bites in that as well. Do you need to see who has eaten it? Yes. Would I you prefer it to matters. be a male or a woman? Do you know what I'd like to see? Their teeth. <laughs> Do you think you should be able to ask someone yeah. about that? This should all be above board. Excuse me, I'm just about to eat your meal. Do you mind if I just have a look at your premolars, <laughs> <Yes>. please? <laughs> just slightly related to that, but following the incident I was talking about before, I walked into the, um, the shopping center and walked into a supermarket and all laid out nicely in front of me were lots and lots of bags of grapes on special. And I was like, oh, okay, great. And, and I proceeded to watch... Every single person <laughs> that walked into that supermarket, go to the bag of grapes, yes. take one out, eat it, and walk on their of way. Course. And I was like, that's so clever because what supermarkets are doing, yep. they're saying to people, you know what? Here's the shit that you're going to steal. <laughs> <laughs> get it out of your system and then get inside and shop. I used to work as a checkout chick, checkout boy, checkout guy, whatever you want to call us. Yep. Um, and this lady came through and, you know, the, the grape is the classic or a few nuts. Mm-hmm. You have a nibble. This wo- this mother came through with her baby just with a banana peel. Just the nah, peel. you really? can't do that. And then gave it to her. I was like, oh, I actually need... It's done on... I said, it's done on... Like she didn't know. I was like, it's done on weight. Um, <laughs> yeah. One um, banana, please. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, it's actually done on weight, so I need a full one. She's like, Because oh. all, all bananas are kind of different sizes, yeah, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. And she's like, well, I'm sure the supermarket makes enough money. I was like, that uh, doesn't yeah. justify stealing. Uh, yeah. it, it, it does, It does though, doesn't it? Yes, oh, yeah. It let's, does. Sorry, let's all have that attitude then. <laughs> well, I'm not going to pay for this $60. I'm sure Safeway makes enough money. <laughs> That's what we do with grapes, though. I, I yeah. honestly want to know what the loss is associated with grapes, because I very rarely see people purchase bags of grapes. Do you know what the best thing is? (laughs) (laughs) What a stupid thing to say. People get their grape quota at the supermarket. Because we, me and my mates, we were organised to watch this like movie marathon thing. Um, And we bought like heaps of those bags of grapes. (laughs) And the lady was like, uh, you know, this is like $30 yeah, worth really of grapes. Expensive. <laughs> we're like, yeah, we know. It's really weird. She's how- like, you can just steal them. <laughs> <laughs> on the subject of um, stealing, the supermarket would have inventory on what is being stolen. I would love to know what is below grapes. I was tr- kind of trying and consider it. It wouldn't be salmon It'd or be anything. like cashews, wouldn't it? Stolen? No, I wouldn't think to steal a cashew immediately. <laughs> immediately? Yeah. That's a no, fourth Josh. or fifth. Yeah, yeah. No, Josh. No, Josh. I wouldn't be up for that. No way. I guess I would love to know. I would love to know what else there would be. Do you guys are putting on the spot? But do you guys have any ideas for what what regularly would be stolen? I'm thinking like chocolate bars might be something. No, for, for your common supermarket thief, and I know this from the inside, it's all about value. So they're looking for your Oral B oh, um, oh. little denture cleaning things, yeah. like the floss things, because they're like fourteen dollars a packet. Yeah, yeah. So they're yeah. all about getting the biggest bang for your buck. Yep. One of my favorite things that someone stole once was um, it was just a, like a, uh, it was like an expensive condom. So there's some sort of vibrating <laughs> element or something to it. <laughs> it was something quite special. So I went through the aisles, and then it was just open, and there was nothing in there. And I took it up, and I was like, "Look at this." Someone's getting off on crime. Uh, <laughs> and they gave me nothing. They gave me nothing. I was like, I deserve better than this. I quit. Did you, did you say it over the loudspeaker through polls though? Because they're sometimes really hard to understand. <laughs> so lately with the election of Donald Trump, I've been thinking about how incredible it would be. To, and I've never thought about this before. And I've always heard that humans really love power and love hanging on to power. But how incredible it must be having executive power. So he's signed all of these executive orders. And basically, most executive orders are for something where you're wanting to bypass Congress. Anyway, this isn't a 
political history lesson. <laughs> but anyway, Congress can't bypass an executive order. So I wanted to, I, I was sort of thinking, what are the things that I would sign? What sort of executive orders would I sign if I was a dictator? And I kind of wanted to put it to you guys. I'm, I'm kind of petrified to to kind of say what you'd sign. <laughs> in case you have, it actually happens. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. And also because you've got such a thin skin. <laughs> If you say something, the podcast might just end. So. I think I think your first decree, you'd have some sort of national holiday where everyone rolls watermelons down hills. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe your first decree is everyone needs to go get a haircut. <laughs> or, or everyone has to have the same haircut as you. <laughs> everyone has to have the same haircut as you. And you know what Josh's would be? Josh, your first decree, everyone needs to have the same haircut as me. <laughs> You're both fucking obsessed with your hair. <laughs> I was thinking that for Josh and for those people, hopefully by this episode, you have gotten to know Josh. I think J- Josh's first decree would just be everyone should just have fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, and for Christian, yes. I think. For- you sound like it's a bad thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, like, I like the idea that you're just everyone have fun, but millions are dying around you. <laughs> yeah. I said, no, 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 have fun. <laughs> and he'd do that on his visits to the yeah. country as well. Just everyone just have fun. <laughs> everyone have fun right now. Uh, and for Christian, it would be a uh, mandatory pronunciation of the words. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> With you, Dion, I reckon you would also have some sort of rule that if, you know, if anyone, if there was something, someone, if there was something someone did that you didn't understand, they would just go to jail. <laughs> that was it. You'd be like, I don't, I don't get why he's done that. Just put him in jail. I don't have to think about him anymore. Get him out of my life. I like the idea that a dictator has this like absolute power that they could effectively like I'd love to see a dictator who just did really dumb things like put really dumb things into in like their decree was that you kind of had to uh, uh, hop throughout the city. <laughs> Everyone must hop. No one hopping straight to jail. To me, every dictator puts people in jail. So inevitably, Christian, you're going to put some people in, in jail. Yeah. But what would be great is that you would start to feel bad about it and you'd go to them and you'd have to be hospitable to them. You'd be like, sorry, mate, do you want a beer or do you want some food or something? You're in my house. You're in my jail. I'm just going to sort you out. So... I, I think, think Christian nice. got off quite lightly. Yeah. I, reckon. I think I did really well out of this. I segment. think you two are in cahoots. Get out of here, <laughs> both of you. Um, dictators are really strange because, like you were saying, Donald Trump is a dictator. Yeah. Like an executive order. Yeah. Is executing power. It's yeah. dictatorial power. It's like yeah. someone like Caesar. Like he is directly comparative to someone like Caesar. And another thing that I've got an issue with Caesar <laughs> is that his death was so. Poetic. I hate <laughs> that he said like know. something like like Shakespeare wrote it, but he said something like um, "and you, my son, et tu Brute to Brutus," as if he wouldn't have just said, "Oh fuck off, Brutus." <laughs> <laughs> was um was the Caesar salad named after Julius Caesar? Yes, because it resembled him. Yes, or something. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> my lord. What <laughs> particular? <laughs> you have an uncanny resemblance to a Caesar salad. <laughs> What is this? What do you call this salad? What does it look like? <laughs> when we think about dictators, like kind of like, which is sad, I kind of immediately go to like, yeah, Hitler's. The Hitler's. I, the, I the, the Hitler's it. of your world. <laughs> <laughs> the Hitler's, the Mussolini's, the you know, Pops. <laughs> yeah, you know, the dictators. You go to those. Yeah, but all of these dictators have these really striking features. Like, think of like Saddam Hussein. Mm-hmm. It's this amazing mustache. Yep. Hitler, amazing mustache. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when you think of like these iconic people throughout history, they've all got these incredibly distinct features. Like, think of mm. Albert Einstein. Everyone immediately thinks of this frizzy hair. Yeah, no, you're right. There is there there. It's kind of like that peacock effect. It's that yeah, the very distinctive feature. So going back to if you were a dictator, what would be your iconic feature? Uh, obviously, Dion's uh, his buck teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the way Josh curls up on a chair. <laughs> oh my God. Josh is very tall. Josh is like six foot. Are you six foot something? Six one or two. Six one like or two. And Josh is incredible in. Um, I'm just quite flexible and can fit into small spaces. I get. I'm. I sleep very comfortably on airplanes. Hang yeah. on a second. What the fuck does that have to do with his? <laughs> His well, point of difference well, as a dictator. Well, that would be the thing. Like, if you think about Hitler's, you know, he's got the 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 Nazi the, the salute, and hunt. Josh would just be a silhouette of him of him crouched up in a chair. So all of all of my portraits would be in a weird chair. <laughs> <laughs> 
really, really good. You know what's really, really good? Really, really good. You know what's really, really good? You know what's really good? An internet cafe still in business. <laughs> really, really good. good. Really, really, really good. good. You know what's really good? Sending out a group text message and having everyone respond instantly. <laughs> really, really good. good. Really, really good. good. You know what's really good? When you're downloading some software and you press the real download button on the first try. Really, really good. good. Really good. Really good. Do you know what's really good? Performing a lane change late at night without using your indicator. <laughs> really, really good. good. <laughs> really good. Really good. You know what's really good? Masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Really good. Really good. Really good. You know what's really good? When you perfectly predict a red light change and you don't have to slow down yes, at all. Really good. Really good. Really good. Really good. Thanks for listening to our podcast this week. If you have any suggestions or if you'd like to submit a really good, please search for Welcome to Patchwork on Facebook. And if you are enjoying the podcast, which we assume you are because you're listening, uh, it'd be great if you could head over to iTunes and leave a review for us. Um, reviews are really important. They help us grow and they... Um, they allow us to be really good. <laughs> Reviews are really important and yeah, we'd really appreciate a review on iTunes. So thank you for listening to Welcome to Patchwork. I've been Dion. I've been Josh. And I've been Christian. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.